for the GBHA meeting on Thursday, June 8th, 2023 to 2 11. Recording in progress. Um, roll call, Bill Vandy Castle and Aaron Edwards are both excused. Everyone else is present. Uh, can we have a motion to approve the agenda? I'll make a motion. That's Steve, can I have a second? Terry, none. Except Terry? Okay. Uh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Okay, all those in favor, say aye. Mm -hmm. Any, aye. Uh, anyone opposed? Great. Move on to regular business. Um, number one, approval of the executive summary for the transaction between Borman and Company, LLC, and Green Bay Housing Authority related to the renovation of Mason Manor and scattered sites. So we have Ted Mackham here from Borman and Company, and we also have attending with us today, uh, Caitlin Conan. Say your last name, Caitlin. It's Kenai. Kenai. Your last name. I see. <laughs> it's not like it's Kenai. <laughs> and attorney no Paul, <laughs> from Baker Tilly, who's our consultant, and we also have attorney Paul Dombrowski, um, who is here as well, um, who has been working with staff and Ted to put together this executive summary. Uh, also, I have reviewed these as well, but we've asked um, Ted to come and walk us through kind of the financial plan and how this will all work. The executive summary was in your packet. Um, if you want to follow along, but um, um, can I have a motion to open yeah, the floor? Motion to open the floor. Motion to open the floor by Steve. Is our second. second by Sandy? Great. All those in favor, say aye. 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 Opposed? Nay. Great. Take it away. Take it away. All right, <laughs> Sandy and Terry, you have the executive summary before you. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Good. I just want to make sure you got one. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, okay. um, just to give a, a little background here, so. Uh, these tax credit deals are, as you know, extremely complicated. Um, the whole premise of a tax credit deal is that we get tax credits from WIDA. We take those tax credits and we sell them to an investor. The investor gives us cash. We put that cash into the deal. And the, the, what that does is that subsidizes our construction costs, which allows us to charge less rent because our debt's less because our construction costs are less, okay? So that's kind of the premise of what we're doing here. We've got two types of tax credits. We have low-income housing tax credits, which is from WIDA, and we have historic tax credits, which was something we kind of, you know, evolved in this deal that Mason Manor was historic, went to SHPO, uh, State Historic Preservation Office, went to the National Park Service, everyone agreed it was historic because of the story of Mason Manor that it created the Green Bay Housing Authority. Mm -hmm. And so that in and of, its, of itself, not, not the beauty of Mason Manor, not that it's a beautiful building, but it wasn't the beautiful architecture, it was the story that made that historic. So good for us because those historic tax credits really give us more money to subsidize the deal without sacrificing kind of what we want to do in our mission. We're just kind of keeping the units the way they are and updating them. And there's nothing, we're not really doing anything structurally to the building. So we're, we're pretty good with that. Um, what we're doing today, uh, there's, there's two steps to this pro process. Today we are going to look at this executive summary and talk about what the deal looks like on an outline basis, and that is going to be submitted to HUD for approval. It's called the financing plan. And Caitlin and Paul are both representing you guys in your interest. We kind of submit something as a developer, and they look at it and say, yeah, we agree with this, so you should do this and this and this. That's all happened, so this is kind of a final mm -hmm. quote unquote uh, product. And then we will submit to HUD. Uh, HUD, Kaylin, how many how many uh, days or months does HUD have to review the financing plan? It usually takes them about sixty days to review it. Okay. And our goal here, and this is very very important, that's why I'm saying this right up front. Our goal is to, of course, close this as soon as possible, but for sure by the end of the year because we're holding vacant units open for the construction process to happen. Not a great thing as you're running a rental property, public or private. So we really want to make sure that this gets timely submitted, which would be, you know, in June, and that we would close in, we're saying like October, November, okay, on that deal. 
So that's, uh, that's kind of the 50,000 foot view of what we're doing, okay? This executive summary was drafted to kind of give you a uh, bird's eye view of the transaction. And then what, you know, I'll probably go through this. Anytime you guys want to say, excuse me, I got a question. You can raise your hand, whatever you want to do. Um, but if you don't want to, we can go through the whole thing and then ask questions later, whatever, okay? It is extremely, uh, I don't want to say complicated. It's, it's, uh, it's a sophisticated transaction. So no question is dumb or stupid or whatever. This stuff is, this stuff is, is, is not rocket science, but it's definitely not 101. Uh, transaction material. It's pretty sophisticated, okay? So with that, I'm just going to start off with the executive summary. Um, now, this executive summary has numbers in it, and those numbers are based on this memorandum of understanding that we all kind of entered into uh, way back when, when it was that November 30th of 2022. It was almost a year, well, not a year ago, six <laughs> months ago, right? Yeah, right? Yeah. So, um, you know, I, I've kind of numbered this, so if you had any references to the Memorandum of Understanding and the Executive Summary, that's what it's trying to compare apples to apples, okay, of, of what we're doing. Okay, so the first thing is this formation of a development entity. So this is an important concept for you to grasp. Um, there will be a development entity that's, uh, and, and just so you know, I made up all these names, so if you don't like them, you could probably raise your hand and we could probably change them, but um, I made them all up. Uh, so we've got um, GBHA Properties LLC. That's going to be, because it's your whole portfolio, I thought that name was appropriate. Um, it's going to be the scattered sites, and it's going to be the Mason Manor building that's going to be in this LLC. This LLC will, quote unquote, kind of own the project. It's going to um, hire the general contractor. It's going to, which is Gorman. It's going to hire the architect, which is Gorman. It's going to hire the property manager, which will be the GBHA. It's going to, you know, run the project, okay? It'll enter into all of these contract um, negotiations. Is there a board attached to that? Not a board. There are members, which I'll okay. go over. Okay. The, the, there are two members really okay the first is a 99.99 percent owner that is the tax credit investor okay here which is attached to your executive summary we have negotiated and we're trying to come to terms with a group called enterprise enterprise i think housing whatever their name is and they're going to be the 99.99% owner. So they're our partner. They're buying the tax credits. You're going to see they're going to put a lot of money, like $25 million into this thing. And they, they've they got people, this is very important to know, like sitting in New York looking at a screen will never come to Green Bay, and they're saying whether or not this deal is good or not for them. Okay, So they're not people like on the ground. They're not people who really care about Green Bay. They're like financial people. Okay, And they're looking at this deal like, how can we protect our interests if we buy these tax credits and everything goes south? And you know we have to go to Green Bay and rescue the deal. You know, it's just their mentality. They're credit people. Okay, So they're the kind of mentality. Um, the point zero 0.01, which is kind of funny because it's like, what? Point, yeah, the decimal is in the right place. 0.01% is a managing member entity, and I've just you know said that that's going to be uh, the um, let's see, is it GBH Properties MM, which is the uh, managing member entity. That's us. That's our little family here, and we're going to be 51% Gorman and Company and 49% GBHA. And you're going to say, well, why aren't I 51%? Why aren't you 49%? Well, because I'm doing all the guarantees. So I've got to kind of control the deal. I'm going to, you know, we're going to co-manage during this construction period. But, you know, and you guys will be in charge. But we will be co-managing because I have to do that with you. The investor wants me to do that. The lender wants me to do that. And then I have the construction guarantee. I'll have the tax credit guarantee. I'll have the compliance guarantee, the environmental guarantee, blah, 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 blah. All the guarantees will be on our shoulders during the period from when we close to when we stabilize. And we'll talk about that a little later, okay? When we stabilize means like we're all leased up and we're humming, okay? So that's kind of the structure of the deal. Some, some caveats, 
that you can see here in terms of what we can't do as 51% owner because you want to have like make sure there's carve outs like you guys you guys can run anything okay but you can't like sell anything <laughs> you can't acquire more debt without our control you can't file for bankruptcy and you can't change the design scope or specifications of anything in the project that we agreed to at closing okay so those are your kind of um, uh, what do you say you know ownership levers that you still have control of all of those material aspects of the transaction and also you're going to have like a ground lease and you're going to have things that we'll talk about in a second okay so there'll, there'll be other things but that's kind of what your protections are um can i have a question yes go ahead what are uh, as a shared component with the point zero mm -hmm. one percent. I mean, that's great. 51.49 of 0 .01. Yes. <laughs> yes, very true. Whatever that comes out to be. Yeah, yeah, I don't know. Work on that side of the decimal point. Uh, what, what do we have in place from the management entity? What what risk management do we have protecting us from the investor that has 99.99 percent? .99%? Well, the, the managing member entity in the operating agreement, there's an operating agreement, right. which is 125 pages. Yeah. Um, that will give us the power to run the deal. Okay. So, like, we'll be able to manage as an entity, and then we'll, in then we'll have an operating agreement amongst ourselves that says you're going to do this, we're going to do that, you're going to do this, we're going to do that. Right. Okay. But but they will give us the MM entity, the LLC, the point zero one, that ninety nine point nine eight percent will give us the power to run the deal. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. And yeah. it's in the it's in the agreement with them in the first place. Yeah. Right. Exactly. Like they're not yeah. making decisions here. They're a financial arm. Right. right. And I'm so glad you brought this up because I forgot to say this. Again, we're putting in the financing plan here, but when we close, we're having another meeting here, exactly like this, where we're saying, "Oh, here's the real final deal. Here's the operating agreement, which Paul's going to review and say I have read and it is good. Here is the all these." notes and things I'm referring to that you're going to give to the project on terms that you agree to that we're going to sign off on. So there's another step here where we're going to actually document all this stuff. This is just the outline where we're going for HUD approval. They say okay and then we document. And that's that's kind of a firestorm after they say okay. We hire a HUD attorney in DC. So this, this is the summary. That's an agreement. Exactly. And that's coming later. Correct. On that. yep, so. yep, 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 yep. Awesome. Okay. Um, okay, uh, any other questions on, on the entities? Sandy or Terry? Okay. So uh, the GBHA and the GBHA properties one just stay? Stay in existence, hanging out there yeah. as mm -hmm. entities, yep, right? Yep, okay. yep, exactly. Yep. Okay, and then uh, number two um, on the second one, Gorman and Company's role and GBH's role in the project. So, um, so we're going to be the, uh, as I said, the, uh, we're going to, um, control construction. We're going to control relocation. Okay, we will control relocation. Of course, we're working with the manager, uh, which is GBHA, to kind of like move people around. Of course, I mean you guys are one hundred and ten percent essential to that, to make people happy. Move within the building. Yeah, move within the building. So like right now we have thirty vacants. Thirty vacants, which is what we need. We are actually doing this uh, on a quadrant basis. We are first going to do it. The first two floors, and then finish that. Do the second floor, or the the uh, third floor from the top, and the fourth floor from the top. We <laughs> changed all that because primarily of the end of the mechanical, electrical, plumbing systems in the building are easier for us to segregate a quadrant. So we're actually doing like the southwest quadrant, <laughs> or whatever you want to say, the right lower quadrant uh, first, and then we're going to do. I, think, I don't know exact, the exact order, but, but what's happening is we have 30 units within the building that are going to house the people that move out of that quadrant. Yeah. And then so the, all the other quadrants will be filled, and this one will be empty. Yeah. We'll finish everything, yeah. then we'll move probably new people into that quadrant. I don't know what Sonia said when they came here, but sometimes <coughs> we do it differently. We move people into the new quadrant. Then we will uh, take another quadrant, move everybody out, and blah, blah, blah. So it's, it's like we go quadrant by quadrant, and we use those 30 units, which actually will grow over time, uh, to accommodate the people who are moving out of the quadrant, okay? Your utilities are stacked vertically, so, yes. you're, so you're going vertically instead of horizontally. Exactly, so you can exactly. You right. one bay at a time. That yep, exactly right. Yeah. 
So, um, so as we do that, we're going to be relocation specialist. Uh, we will be construction. We're the architect. Okay, and. Um, as we do all of this, we're going to have HUD compliance, we're going to have WIDA compliance, we guarantee all of that, and then at the end, we have to hit what's called a stabilization. And that stabilization is a term of art for every kind of uh, apartment, uh, rental property, I'll say rental property, either it's apartment, uh, public housing or anything. It's when you have reached uh, a 1.15 debt coverage ratio, in other words, you're making 15 cents more than you're spending on a dollar basis. You spent a buck, you made a dollar 15. That's 1.15, okay? And that's your DCR. That means your debt coverage ratio, you're stable. Pretty much every single unit's leased. That's really how you get there. You have maybe one that's not leased, but you really need everything leased. Then your operating expenses have to be kind of the way you said they were gonna be because we're gonna project what those operating expenses are. Right now, I'm guessing as public housing, you guys have operating expenses that you budget, but you go to HUD and say, give us reimbursement for whatever we did. Sometimes you had spikes, sometimes you didn't, and you'd kind of reconcile, right? And now we're gonna be on this kind of section eight contract type of thing where we're, you know, we better hit what we say we're gonna hit, and it's very, very consistent with what we've done in the past. So there's no surprises. But we now have to hit that because it's in the deal. You know what I mean? It's not like go to HUD and say, oops, we messed up. Need some cash, HUD. No, no, no. They're going to say, you know, go to another source to get that cash if you go way over. And there's operating deficit reserves in this whole deal. There's reserves to deal with that. But bottom line is you have to project your expenses based on your history. Sell everybody that we're all competent to manage this thing. And we're going to be doing it for 15 years. Or you guys are going to be doing it for 15 years. Okay, so it's stabilization. When we fill the building up, everything's leased up, we will exit, i.e. Gorman will exit. Uh, the housing authority will be on, stand on its own and it will manage it just like it always managed it before. Okay, it should be really nothing other than you'll have completely overhauled new systems. Your maintenance should not be what it was before. You should have a quote unquote new building. If we didn't do that, we screwed up somewhere. It just, seriously, it should be like very efficient. We did this in Wausau at Riverview Towers, and they're just like, it's a dream. We have this like 19, you know, 71 building that was an absolute disaster. We changed all the plumbing, all the electrical, all the heating, and they just like are running. It's like it's a, running like a smooth bus. So, so hopefully that's what we're gonna do. And um, and so that's kind of what our role is, and then your role is to add stabilization to take over the entity and run it until the 15th year and it's the 15th year after you place in service we place in stabilization and place in service are big words place in service is when all your tax credits start flowing uh, historic and local housing tax credits and when you place in service it's 15 years from when you place in service so it'll be kind of stabilization place in service everything will be kind of all happening at the same time you know because we're really going to be leased up when we're not. Because mm -hmm. we're, we're uh, is, is enterprise we're equity buying both? Yes. Both those tax credits. Yes. Okay. Is, uh, the historic. Um, and there's the state historic, and federal historic, and, and federal life. So history. the and I and I asked this once before, and I'm not sure I completely understand the, the state and. You're jumping state. ahead now. Come on. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> the state and federal historic tax credits are subject to approval. From yeah, they're already the store. They are. Yeah, they are, they are, yeah part two is approved. Okay. We're done. okay, so there's no, there's no like, no oh, risk. just kidding, we missed 40 percent. Exactly. Deal. Right. No, no, okay. we're done. Okay. We're all done. And we have to have that because of uh, you can't do that until you have to have all that approved until uh, before you go to HUD. Okay. Okay. So. And the WIDA is the non-competitive. Correct. Four percent. So non we're not competing against other yeah. projects. Yeah. Yeah. Tax yeah. Okay. Okay. Um, okay. So site control. Okay, this is pretty major. So, um, so just to back up to clarify, when, yeah. when you're out of it after stabilization, mm -hmm. then then we, the housing authority, will get you like you'll turn over your 51 percent portion. Correct. So that will be the entirety of the yes, point I'm sorry, one percent. Yes, you'll be 100 percent of the point one right. one. We'll, like right we'll now withdraw. We're, we're 51 49 of the point oh one. <laughs> yeah. 
And, oh, and it's, and it's, that would be all the point. Oh, and it's for a dollar. It's right. not like, oh, you're going with a million dollars because that's a, mm -hmm. uh, it's a right. buck. Right, and I was just going to say. And we just hand over the keys. And it's for a dollar. Mm -hmm. yep. Now, some guarantees will go to you. you know, like, everything's going to you guys. So yep. there's tax credit guarantees. There's operating deficit guarantees, blah, 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 blah. And that uh, that will go to you at stabilization. But you're right. You get 100%. That's a great point. Yep. Okay, site control. Okay, so... Uh, right, back up now. One yeah. more, sorry. Sure. Because yeah. in the in portion two, um, we will. It says we'll be assuming the outstanding debt mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Do we know what that debt's going to be? Yes, you'll know exactly what the debt is. Uh, actually, I think we're going to go over it right now. Okay. Is we're going to go over the okay. sources of exactly the debt that will be outstanding. You're going to have a huge um, construction loan that you're going to be like rah, but then all of the tax credit equity and everything will. Whoosh, Pay that all down, and you'll come back to this number that I'm here. Okay. It, I mean, this number might change. Uh, it's five million one thirty, might be a couple hundred thousand here and there, but okay. I mean, that's pretty much what it's going to be. Okay. And that is designed to fit what your rents are. Okay. Okay, and your operating expenses. Okay. So site control. So um, we are going to have um, since. Uh, let me let me yeah, back up. Right now, you own two groups of assets. One is Mason Manor, and that is GBHA, okay? The other is the scattered sites, which is, what is that again? Properties One? Properties One. We call it Properties One. Properties one. Yeah. Yep. And uh, yeah, GBA is property One. And so both of those are going to, quote unquote, lease the improvements, okay, the improvements uh, I'm sorry, they're going to lease the land. They're going to lease the land to the development entity, and then they're going to sell the improvements. Okay? You have, I mean, that's this the way it is. The, the, you don't have to do that, but the ground lease gives you more protection. Uh, number one, for um, uh, if something happens, you've got leverage there because you are the lessor versus you sold everything and now you're begging to get it back. Okay? And, uh, and, and the improvements have to be sold because you have to sell something for the tax credits. Okay, it's gotta come in. So um, what happened was we got a appraisal from a very, very reputable firm, national firm called Novogratic. Uh, they're kind of like a Baker Tilly, but they're you know national. And they do this appraisal and they had a $16 million figure that was given to your assets. So congratulations, you have $60 million of assets. So the, the um, and, and what, what we wanted to do there is get the appraisal of those assets as is. Like if you put them to market, what would they be? You know, based on the rents you get and the operating expenses and all that. And they came up with 16 million. They, that's including the land. You're, you're ground leasing the land, they take the land away from that. So that is um, 14.8 million is actually what the improvements are going to be. Again, remember, we're conveying the improvements. So 14.8 million, 14 .8 million is our number. Does Mason Manor have the scattered sites? Correct. Combined. That's, what, that's, okay. that's the, uh, the improvements on top the of the land. Yep. Correct. Okay. Uh, so, so we are going to, and let me, just, let me just say this without looking at this, because I just want you all to understand this. It's 16.8 million. 1.2 million you take off for the land, you're at 14.8 million. Then you have an allocation, which we'll see here, between the scattered sites and Mason Manor. And then you're going to uh, have a seller note for some of that. And at closing, you're gonna get paid for some of that. So the 14.8 million, okay, let's just, let's just look at them as combined, because it gets very complicated in here, that's why I wanna do this like this. Combined, 14.8 million is the scattered sites and Mesa Manor. At closing, um, we have to have, based on tax credit opinion, they used to have, uh, three years ago, 14.8 million could just be a seller note from the, from the GBHA to the deal, whatever, it's fine. Now they're saying, well, to make the seller note real for a tax opinion, because this drives credit, all this drives credit, uh, you have to have a down payment. You have to have, you actually have to pay it out to the GBHA, some of it. Um, there's two reasons we picked the number $5 million. One is to, uh, to accommodate that tax opinion. The second is what's called a 50% test, which I'm not even gonna go into, but it's a 
accounting term. So the five million is going to come from WIDA at closing to pay you guys allocated to properties one and GBHA based on Mason Manor and Scattered Sites. You will take that five million. Now HUD does not allow you to keep the five million. You got to put it right back into the deal or else they won't let it happen. So you're going to lend it back into the deal from properties one and GBHA. Okay, so again, 16.8 million dollars, sorry, 16 million dollars, 1.2, um, with $60 million, 1.2 is the land, 14.8 million is gonna be um, your sale price, in a sense. You're gonna get 5 million of that back, so you're taking 9.8 million is gonna be seller note that goes back to the project, plus the 5 million is gonna go back to the project. So the whole 14.8, it gets a little bit cycled through just because of this tax opinion. Okay, I'm sorry, that's the, only, that's the easiest I can explain it. It's a little complicated, and when you go through these sources, hopefully it makes it a little easier, okay, as we go through these. So as, as Cheryl indicated, you know, what do we have to pay back? You guys are taking a, a promissory note, first mortgage, just like your house, when you buy your house, first mortgage, of 5.13 million from WIDA. That's your first mortgage, okay? That's based on your rent and your operating expenses. Could vary a couple hundred thousand as we get into this whole thing, but that's pretty much going to be what it is. The 5.13 million you will have to pay back. Geez, that's kind of risky, isn't it? Well, you have a government contract on all of your rents. Uh, if you don't trust the U.S. government, we're in trouble. But they have to pay those rents so that you can pay your debt. It's about the least riskiest thing you could do in the apartment industry. Okay. So that's, that's what that is based off of the 5.1 million. Enterprise is buying our tax credits, state, federal, historic, and the federal long-term housing tax credits called LIHTC is the acronym. They're putting in $25 million into this deal, which is fantastic, okay? Would not be able to happen without that. Then all of these seller notes are for Mason Manor conveying it, for scattered sites conveying it, just as those numbers that I told you, but we're breaking it out because we have to allocate between the two. And then um, we also have uh, the subordinate debt, which is the $5 million I talked about. I'm gonna explain it again. $16 million, 1.2 comes off for the land, 14.8 million, 5 million is gonna come back to you at closing. That's the subordinate debt, the five million allocated between uh, properties one and Mason Manor. And then the 9.8 million is carved up right above it for Mason Manor and the scattered sites, okay? That's just carving that up. That's how it's gotta be carved up because you owe, you own both of those assets with different entities, okay? So it's a little complicated. Um, then the next one is your GBHA CFP funds that are HUD controlled. Those are coming into the deal. And then you guys have unrestricted reserves, which you are um, using at 500,000 that's coming into the deal. We have, a, we have a developer fee in this deal, $6 million. The deal is 50% to you guys, 50% to us. Since we're out of the deal, we get our fee for guaranteeing construction and everything before uh, Stables, you know, at stabilization, sorry. You guys have a, what's called a deferred fee of three million. And why that's so important is because with the historic credit and the low income housing tax credit, guess who gets 99.99% of cash flow? Enterprise. Except you've got $3 million of deferred fee that's gonna suck 100% of that up. And you've got a ground lease and you've got promissory notes. So you're gonna suck that up for the whole time they won't get a dollar, okay? So that's, that's a good thing, but that's uh, how that whole thing um, is allocated. The last uh, bullet I have underneath, this is a $50 million deal, okay? Primarily because of the seller note is so large, but it is a $50 million deal. Uh, we drive credit from a $50 million deal. 
Um, the GBHA loan, this is what we're negotiating right now with Enterprise. I'm not going to go into this in detail, but I do want to make you aware. Um, the Enterprise, again, is 99.98% owner, and they have this guy in New York who's supposed to, you know, tell you how bad you are so that they can feel good about themselves. And so what they say is, hey, you guys don't have enough money in the bank, or hey, this risk is too much for us to handle without somebody else coming in and guaranteeing. Well, the entire deal from day one has been Gorman is leaving, so you guys get the full benefit of the deal after stabilization. It's always been the deal from day one. So there, we're kind of negotiating how that can happen in enterprise being comfortable, okay? And that's why I have a dollar sign here. We've talked about an additional $500,000 going in there. We've talked about not putting an additional 500 and just having the GBHA uh, financials stand on their own. And we're kind of fighting and clawing back and forth. So that's still, it does not need to be resolved for the financing plan. We are putting this in because as Caitlin said, it's a 60 day runway. So who cares about that now? We're putting in the financing plan based on our approval if we get it today. And then we will we'll hatch it out in the next 60 days. We will come back to you for final approval on that, okay? Okay, any questions on that horribly complicated stuff? No? Steve? I don't think so. I mean, I'm, I'm still struggling with the concept of the 1.15 debt ratio on um, the safest deal ever. And why do we need to carry 15% extra for, for debt coverage if it's the safest deal with the federal government, right? Yes, yes, I, I think you're right. Um, I mean, I understand you guys, yeah. are like, that's how it works. I, right? I think all of that would be uh, negotiated, like those are all terms and very good terms uh, in terms of um, <coughs> negotiating the stabilization release of Gorman and, and GBHA on its own. Like, what's the risk, guys? Come on. Well, right, like right. 15%. And I mean, like, private world 1.2. Okay, so it's a little better. Right. right. Oh, but, I mean, I totally it's good. still kind of. Like there's not a huge risk. It's it's not a 15% risk. Amount of the, the only risk factor. The only risk that enterprise would say is like they said it today to me. They said, you know, hey, what if operating expenses blow up and you know there's a nuclear war with Putin and every all the utilities go, well, right. who's who's covering that? Yeah. You know. Okay. Okay. <laughs> I mean, if that's really what you're going to get bank on. So for the duration of construction, builders' risk is on the development it's entity? In, it's in the, like, I would take builder's risk as Gorman for the GC yeah. and put it in my budget of GC. Okay. Yeah. Okay. General contract. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's in there. Okay. Okay. Again, let's go to project guarantees, number five. So we are doing the completion guarantee. So, you know, just like any other general contractor, something's wrong, got warranties, whatever, our problem. Okay, you guys come to us, should be a turnkey, okay? Construction finance guarantee, uh, we owe anything that hiccups, again, cost overruns, if there's a million dollars of cost overruns, not your problem, our problem. You know, we, we have the expertise to assess all that. Um, so anything that happens like that, we, we've got to figure it out, okay? Gorman comes up with it. Uh, compliance guarantee, anything that we screw up with HUD or whatever, on our dime, on our, on our watch. Um, operating deficit, again, this is more of a stabilization, post-stabilization concept of operating deficit, but, you know, if for some reason our relocation budget or something blew up, uh, that's more of an operating deficit guarantee uh, that we would be responsible because we have to assess the risk before we close. Uh, tax credit delivery, you know, if we don't put this thing placed in service as we as we projected, we have what's called negative adjusters. That means that they penalize us for not hitting our dates to deliver their tax credits because they have a yield they have to achieve based on the price they're paying and the timing that they're getting the credits. We have to make that up, make that difference up if there is a problem. Uh, and then uh, you know any other guarantees I can think of, which I say in there, but, you know. We, we negotiate those, but those are the ones that are routine and ones that are in this LOI, letter of intent that is uh, attached to. Um, and the only GBHA guarantee from closing to project stabilization would be environmental. This is a very small sliver, but the thought here is that for asbestos, lead paint, all that, our deal. 
it's like, um, oh, there's an underground storage tank here that we never thought of that, you know, is leaking and we never saw. Well, you know, that's not really our deal. We've got, like, the whole building and we know how to assess the building for scattered sites and for um, uh, Mesa Manor. But if there's something in Mesa Manor or at a scattered site in the backyard and there's, like, some, you know, uh, underground storage tanks that's been leaking for 15 years, it, you know, that's, that's not going to be our deal. You know what I mean? That's your deal. So the environmental review was done, though, by yes, Scantech. Right. So we have had environmental reviews done for the property. Yeah, exactly. Which it's they they didn't find any. It's risk called it. Yeah, it's called a Part Fifty Eight, yep. and they do a Phase One and a Phase Two, which is borings. If yep. they file and they did some and they didn't find anything, and we're good. Okay. So we're good. So we should be fine. I mean, it's just a very very small sliver, but it's a concept. Like, yeah, we're not we're not we're not taking the risk of every single forty one site underground storage tank or something. Mm -hmm. you know? So it should be very minimal. Um, following stabilization, GBHA will be on the hook for operating deficit. So you have an operating reserve that will be set up, which is $825,000. And that will be there in case you go over your operating budget, okay? But you don't really want to touch that. You want to work within what we budgeted. So that is always a nice little cushion and a comfy little blankie that you have though for 15 years if you ever get in trouble, okay? So you don't want to just start sucking on that right on the, right off of day one. Mm -hmm. Tax credit delivery. So what happens in this is the 99.99% um, enterprise, they buy the tax credit. What's interesting about the low income housing tax credit and the historic tax credit, two different credits. Historic is five years and the um, low-income housing tax credit is 10 years. You have to have your lights on. That's all you have to do. You don't have, you, you don't have to do anything for the historic credit except keep your lights on. If you go dark, you lose them. So you just got to keep a light on. Uh, for the low-income housing tax credit, you got to keep leasing up your units. Right. They can be down for six months if you got to turn them over or something's going on, you had to evict somebody or whatever. But you, every year, you got to have somebody in there that's certified and that's your problem as a managing, mm -hmm. you know, as a manager, um, your duty. So those are pretty simple. They're ordinary course things. You guys won't have to do it. For compliance of all of those, this is a Section 42, IRS Section 42 program, a little different than public housing, primarily because WIDA has reporting requirements. You guys will probably hire Baker Tilly, I would imagine, as kind of your compliance manager. Or you know somebody, I would think it'd be bigger, Tilly, and uh, and they they'll just make sure that you're doing those reports in the right way, right? Is that right, Kaylin? Is that possible? I think we did that with Wasa. I don't know if you guys still do that or not. I don't think we still do that, oh, okay. but we can chat offline. There's but there's a lot of third, there's a lot of third parties that, that do that, um, but that's probably what you'd probably want is a little bit of a cushion of someone just looking over your shoulder saying, "Did you do this? Do this?" And it's preaching, <laughs> preaching. Pre Right, so our staff will get trouble. We'll have yeah, you'll be for trained. our staff. Yeah, yeah I'm sorry. You right. guys will have, all have to be staffed and certified by WIDA to take over at stabilization, right. which takes you six months. So we make sure the reports are done properly and whatnot, but that'll remain, that'll stay in house. Correct. We budgeted for that. Mm -hmm. Last time yep. we had a proper meeting. Yep. For the yeah. training. Yep. Staff seat, paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the developer fee uh, was just, we went through that. Um, our role here, general contractor, co-manager, re, uh, relocation consultant, number seven, compliance manager until stabilization, uh, GBHA role from closing this project stabilization, co-manager, uh, after manager, compliance manager, can outsource this, uh, pretty much covered all oh, pre-development, okay, so per the MOU, um, the board is supposed to approve kind of the pre-development expenses that we've done. Maybe we did a little bit of lax on that just because we've kind of been running with this thing. Uh, I have attached a ledger to your packet, which is really small and I can't read it. But um, if you want any more information on that, we can get that to you. That is what we've incurred to date, which is this $216,000. We anticipate about $100,000 of legal expense because Paul's so expensive. Uh, and then another hundred thousand dollars of uh, we have scattered. Uh, we have to do a um, very intensive survey process on all the forty-one scattered sites, which people have been <laughs> calling you about. 
Um, and so that's just, we just have to do that. The industry makes us do that. Um, which will, it'll probably be 400 to 500,000 at the end of the day, which is pretty typical of these deals. Um, the schedule of the project, uh, we submit the financing plan this month. We're closing in October, start construction right when we close. We'll start moving people. You know, that's gonna be the first phase when we start construction. Uh, construction completion, March of 2025. Project stabilization, October of 2025. Ted, yep. we're approving an executive summary today and there's $600,000 worth of government fee included in our executive summary. Is that what you just said? No, okay. no. You mean for the so pre-development? You would attach the ledger for the pre-development agreement into the executive summary that we're about to vote on? No, no, we have we have a 50-50 sharing agreement, I think, if it terminates on that. Okay. Uh, for, let's see here, let's actually read that, because there is... I think if we turn, right, if GBHA terminates it. All right. And if we stop the project, then we're out. It's then you're on the hook for the pre yeah. Okay. yeah, we'll agree on the budget for pre development expenses, including legal and connection government shall arrange financing for all the pre development costs. So it's on us, you know, through a loan yeah. that we have. Government shall pay all of, uh, subject to reimbursement by the authority of set forth below. Authority shall not incur any pre development costs in connection with the project without first obtaining the approval of Gorman. So, like, you know, you can't just go out and just do whatever you want to do, right? <laughs> right. Gorman shall not incur any pre-development costs in connection with the extent such costs are outside of the agreed upon budget without first obtaining the approval of authority. So we never really did that, I don't think, officially. Okay. You know, so okay. I'm thinking, like, this executive summary kind of is back <coughs> to move forward. Um, if the transaction kind of is then what closes, uh, the closing of all, then all the pre-development costs will be reimbursed, okay? by paying off that loan that we yeah. got. Yeah, all right, uh, all right. Blah, blah, blah. No, that's what okay. I, that's well, I, yeah, I, we should say if the MOU is terminated, as yes. a result of that closing, other words, authority shall reimburse 50% of all the pre-development costs in connection with the project, which shall reimburse authority 50% of all approved legal fees or whatever. So it's kind of like a 50-50 sharing if we have to terminate. If the contract is yeah. terminated. Okay, exactly. okay. sorry, carry yeah, on. Thank, thank you. you. Good question. Um, attached to your executive summary is a uh, summary, uh, not a summary, I'm sorry, it's a conditional commitment from WIDA to issue bonds, and that's the bonds are issued by WIDA in order to um, lend on this deal to provide construction and permanent financing. Uh, you can see here the construction is a $19 million loan, the permanent is a $5 million loan. How do you get from the construction loan to the permanent loan is the tax credit equity. It comes in and it pays that down, okay, in a rough sense. Um, and then also here is the enterprise letter of intent. We are not, we actually, I want to go through this line by line. Cheryl says, no flipping away, are you doing that? So we got an executive summary instead, that's a good idea. Uh, but you can read this. Uh, you know, in your sleep or whatever you want to do. Um, everything is pretty much in what the executive summary is and what I talked about today. Uh, it's just in legalese and uh, light tech ease and historic ease. So, um, tax credit ease. So, that is, uh, and then we have the ledger of the pre development expenses. So, that's pretty much the story of what we're trying to do. But it's a $50 million deal. It's uh, it's a huge undertaking. Um, will allow, just so you know, the scattered sites, this is very important, the scattered sites are not gonna have a huge scope to them. We're trying to minimize the disruption of the residents. And the reason we brought the scattered sites in is to increase the rent roll of the entire project so we can do more with Mason Manor. Mason Manor really needs an overhaul. We have to extend the life of that asset and that means we have to re replace all the MEPs, mechanical, electrical, plumbing, and then we also have to, you know, just make life better for the residents on a, on a 2023 level. So that thing is really taking most of the cash, and the scattered sites are essential in making that rent roll to where we get that five million dollar permanent loan from um, from WIDA. So that's, that's kind of why the scattered sites are in here. Not to overhaul the scattered sites, but to increase. At put the same the, level, like what's the amount though per scattered site? That right, I think, I think the minimum that is required by the tax credit investor is $20,000. Right. 
Uh, we right now have, I think, 38,000 right. in there. Right, so there is money that we can put into scouting right. sites roof replacements windows, exactly. whatever so and there is a there is a right. uh, there is a physical needs assessment that was done by right. a third party that we submit to HUD that had you know a third party uninterested that says this is what you need to do to the scattered sites and this is what you need to do to Mason Matters make it right mm -hmm. yep. so that there is a watchdog in the sense there that is a HUD certified uh, property needs assessment analyst so thank you for all those questions because I forget a lot of it so <laughs> any other questions that you guys have uh, on this complicated transaction, or Caitlin or Caitlin Paul, or you, Paul guys did, you know, do you guys want to weigh in anything? I mean, I know you've both reviewed this. Um. <laughs> <laughs> Give us your blessing, yeah. Caitlin. I reviewed it, and that book is me. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm kind of in the same spot. You know, we did we had a little back and forth on it, and but I think it does a good job at you know kind of giving you a, a big picture. Of what's going on, and yeah, um, we reviewed it, and it it does make sense, and I would say it's consistent with you know other light tech deals that get done. There's nothing here that jumps out as being unusual or out of the ordinary or you know questionable or whatever. Okay, great. So I think there's an action item, right? <laughs> yeah. So. Um, if there's no other oh, questions, sorry. I'll have a motion to close the floor. I'll make that motion. Sandy and Steve, second. second. Okay. All those in favor say aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, motion carried. So back to regular business. So we do need um, action on this, this item, which would be the approval of the executive summary. No, I'll make a motion to approve the executive summary as presented. Motion made by Steve to approve. I'll second. Second by Sandy. Heck yeah, Sandy. <laughs> Are there any questions or any other comments? Great. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Anyone opposed? Great. Motion carries. Now, um, we have to do this again at the meeting immediately following this one, GBHA mm -hmm. Properties 1, right? I won't explain everything. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> we, we won't make Ted explain it all again, but. I guess just for your information, we'll need to do this again for Green Bay Properties One. So, so now, and, and the other thing I wanted to say is, I'm probably not going to call a June GBHA meeting. This will fill in place for that, so I'll keep you guys posted. But, um, so the next step after this now is you're going to go back and still work on some of these numbers, mm -hmm. right, to fill those in on this document. Right. And then we're probably looking at that. What meeting do you think will bring this back then for final? Like uh, September? Well, I think the things that need to be negotiated probably are between you and me. It's mm -hmm. a staff level kind of thing. Yep. And then, unless unless there's some major thing we have to come back here. Right. Um, assuming there isn't, mm -hmm. okay, and it's a staff level kind of discussion, then we would come back probably, geez, if we're closing in October, it'd probably be a September meeting where okay. we'd say this is where we're going. And then you guys would say go, and then we'd get everything finalized and closed. Okay, cool. That's a good timeline. We've been working on this a long time. <laughs> the but tenants will be happy to see like improvements. Exactly. Yep. Okay, so um, is there a motion to adjourn this meeting? We'll make the motion aye. to adjourn. I'll say yes. Great. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No one? Great. 